cuties, I'm Brittany with Stitches of Love Quilting and we are ready to make our fifth block of our Loads of Fun Block of the Month. Can you believe we're already on our fifth one? I can't. I'm so excited to make this one. It's super cute. It's got like a little gnome, a little snail, some flowers, a watering can. So as always, read through your pattern, get your threads in order. We use a lot of beautiful colors this month. And of course, organize all of your laser cut applique pieces. I have mine, you can't really see it on the camera, but I have mine organized in little piles off to the side, ready to go. So load your file in your white thread and let's get started. So within your hoop, you have your top and bottom guideline and we are gonna put our fabric on top of that. Again, I always turn my hoop sideways so that it fits on my steady beddy. So you will be looking at my hoop sideways. And then you just simply take your fabric that comes in your kit that's your applique background fabric. This month it has the little denim blue dots on it. And you simply place it in the middle of your hoop, center it left and right, or as it is on the screen, top and bottom, and then make sure you're covering your stitched lines and give yourself a little bit of tape to keep everything in place. So we're gonna continue with white thread until noted otherwise in the pattern for all of our applique placement lines. So with that being said, let's put this back on. Our machine is going to stitch our fabric into place and that's also gonna be used as our guideline later when we're trimming. And it's gonna give us our first round of applique outlines. Okay, so we have our first round of applique outlines. We are on step nine, which means we're ironing pieces one through five, seven, nine, 11, 17, 18, and 24. So let's get started. We have the rear view mirror that we'll put in place first. Then the top of our truck, this is a super cute green plaid this month. It's called Alpine Green. And it's a Lori Holt plaid, just like all of the plaids in this quilt. And get it in place and then just work your way from one side to the other, making sure it's nicely in place. Then we have our truck bed that we'll put next. There we go. Don't you love that all your pieces are a perfect fit? You simply just have to pay attention to the outline and put it in place. Easy peasy. Now we have our two truck tires, so number four and five. The wheels are just a smidge different, so you do wanna make sure that you put them in the right position numbers four and five this month. There we go. Give them a press. And I did go on and remove the tape that I had on my fabric to make sure that I didn't get my iron sticky. Now we're gonna put our license plate. There are two pieces. So just make sure to put that right in place. Go on and stack both of them. There we go and Prius. Then we have our flower number nine and it goes just like so. There you go. You want to make sure you get all the petals in the right spot and again you can use your placement guide to give yourself a little arrow on the back and make sure you have it facing the right way so when you get to your actual piecing or placing it you don't have to spin it around. So use that placement guide. There we go. Now we have our little bitty circles. There are two circles for each of our snail eyes. When you're putting these in place on little bitty pieces like this, make sure you have the fusible side down. So put one and two. Identify which side has the fusible. Hopefully I'm identifying right because I took my fusible backing off and then one side that has the fusible is just a little shinier there we go and our last little circle right in place there we go those are our little snail eyes and then we have one piece right here. There we go. And it is double lined as well. This is number 24. There we go. So now we're gonna continue. So with the white thread, 
So this is what your hoop looks like right now, and we'll move on to our next round of applique outlines. Okay, so we have our next round of applique outlines, and we are going to put our pieces in place. So this is step 11. So we're gonna start with our bumper, number six, and it butts right up to the license plate and then fits perfectly in place. There we go, give it a press. There we go. So now we will put 10 and 11, these are our flower centers. The flower centers, there are two of them and they're perfect circles, they're exactly alike. So that makes it nice and easy. Again, with little pieces like this, make sure you have the fusible side down so when you take the backing off, it can be a little hard to tell and you don't wanna iron it to your iron. <laughs> so there we go. Then we have our flower number 13 which will go like so, easy to put in place right here. There we go, I got it a little crooked. There we go. Give that a press. And now, when it comes to our purple flowers, I used my placement guide and I gave myself my little arrows so that I know which way is up. And so number 15 is this flower right here. And I'm going to turn it the right direction Peel the fusible backing, put it right in place. Look at that. So easy, because then I don't have to spin it around. Same thing I did with number 16. There we go. And put that in place. And now we'll give these a little press. There we go. Now we have number 25. So this is the left hand. Again, when it comes to the peach fabric, there are two pieces because we're double lining the hand of our little gnome. There we go. Two pieces in place, just so. There we go. And then we have our right hand, number 26. Again, double lined. It goes a little bit over that truck bed. There we go. And now we get to put on the super cute hat. I love this fabric. It's got little threads and needles, so it's really cute how it falls on the hat. And then, love it. Right in place. Give your little hat a press. And then the final piece of this step is the blue little pom-pom at the top of the hat. So now we'll continue on with the white thread. Oh, and look, I somehow got a little circle down here. You guys probably saw that happen and I didn't see it happen. Which way is feasible? This way. How did I do that, you guys? Did you see it happen? You're probably at home watching going, Brittany, what'd you do? There we go. Back in place, you stay there. <laughs> All right, so this is what your hoop looks like right now. So we'll continue on for the next round of applique outlines. Okay, so we're on our next round of ironing on our applique pieces. So we are going to start with the black trim around our license plate. So simply get that in place. I think it goes this way. Yes, you know, because if it's not a perfect fit when you put it down, you know, you've got to go in the wrong way. There we go. So now we have a flower center right here. This is number 14. Again, it's a circle, perfect circle, and there are two to double line it. So we will put them right there in place. And then we have the beginning of our little snail. This is his snail body. There we go. Let's give those two pieces a press. And now we'll do the hat on our little gnome. There we go. Just like so. Cute as can be. All right, and now we'll continue on with the white thread for our next round of applique outlines. So this is what we have so far, we're getting there. Okay, so let's iron our pieces in place. We have our snail body, which is number 20. So we're on step 15, by the way. The snail body is also a perfect circle. You're welcome. <laughs> that makes it nice and easy to put in place. 
Now we have the nose of our little gnome. This is number 30. There are two pieces. So we're just going to lay them right on top of each other. There we go to double line his little nose. So cute. Also add some dimension when you do the double lining if you notice, especially like on his little eyeballs for the snail. And then our watering can goes into place like this. And that's the only applique pieces that we have to iron on this round. So this is what we have so far. Just two more steps to go before we start doing all the fun stitching. So let's continue on. Okay, so let's iron on our applique pieces. This is step number 17 that we're ironing on. And again, we have some flowers. So I have done my handy dandy little arrow for myself. Can you see that? Yep. So first up is number 21. This is the flower that's actually on the snail body all the way. So put this little guy right in place. I love how these flowers are stitched. They're gonna be stitched with the cutest little buttonhole stitch. I love it. Now we have number 22, which is just right here. Get your arrow going the right way. And see, doesn't that make it easier instead of having to turn it until you get it in the right position, you know which way to go. There we go. Whoop. You stay there. And then number 23, you can iron as you go with each one. I'm being brave and putting all three into position. There we go. And can y'all hear in the background, I have the studio doors open here at the office and Buttons and Ellie, you hear them, they're playing. A bark box came today. So there is a plethora of new toys for them to play with. So they're out in, I don't know, I call it like the living room area up here. So now we're gonna hire, or hire, we're gonna iron number 32 right here. I'll have to close the door in a second because those doggies are being loud. They're having so much fun. I love it when they come and play together, when they both come to the office with us. And then number 33, another flower. I did the same thing. See, I put an arrow for myself. So up is this way. And that way I don't have to worry about turning this a million times to get it in place. Look at that. So easy peasy. Just make sure everything is where it belongs. Give it a press and now world's smallest piece well until the next step number 35 this is the end of the watering can and very carefully i'm going to put it in place this is where it might be handy to have your little tool like this out just to kind of push it into place there we go and give it a press so now we have one more step and that is for the flower center right here on this flower. Okay, so we have the teeniest, tiniest little flower center to put in place. This is number 34. So I'm going to remove the backing and we're gonna put it in place. It's an oval. There we go. And you might wanna use your little tool cause it kinda wants to stick to your hand. There you go. You stay in place. Yay, victory, it's in place. And a press. There we go. So we are going to continue with white for the next step. We're now on step 20 of the pattern. So everything's ironed on. And when the white goes on, all of your white pieces are gonna stitch. So 15 through 18 and 21 through 23 will be stitched in white. Okay, let's take a look. Your little snail eyes are stitched. And can we talk about how good our flowers look? I love that little buttonhole stitch. And the white around the purple just totally makes those stand out. I love it. So now we are going to, by the way, for all the remaining steps, I'm taking my hoop on and off the arm of my machine so I can talk to you about the thread changes. For you at your machine, you do not need to be taking your hoop on and off. We're simply doing that for filming. So now we are going to load 1218 silver gray and our little rear view mirror and our bumper will be stitched. Okay, take a look. Your rear view mirror and your bumper look so cute. Now it is time to load this beautiful color. Isn't that such a pretty green? This is 1176, the medium dark avocado and our fun little alpine truck is going to be stitched. All right, let's take a look. 
looking good. I love the green on the truck. So now we're going to load 1005 black in our two tires and then around our license plate will be stitched. Okay, take a look at your license plate and your tires. They look super good. Now it is time to load this beautiful 1225 pastel pink and the outside of our three flowers, I believe. Yes, 9, 11, and 13. And then the two little hands and nose of your gnome will be stitched. Take a look, your flowers are looking good. Your little gnome has a nose and some hands. Now we are going to load another pink. It is 1256 sweet pink and the three flower centers will be stitched in this contrasting color to really make them pop. Look at your perfect flower centers. They look so good. Now we are going to load, actually a color we don't use very often, 1815 Japanese fern, and we are going to have our cute little snail stitch so he comes to life. Look at that snail, so cute. Now we are going to load a beautiful blue, deep Nassau blue, 1293, and our little hat gnome will be stitched. Alrighty, we've got a cute little gnome hat going on. Now it's time to finish the gnome hat by loading the 1292 heron blue and the little um, front part of the hat and the top little pom-pom of the hat will be stitched next. Now your hat is all finished and it is time to stitch some yellow on our watering can and the little flower center. So we're going to load Butterfly Gold 0567. Okay, take a look at your watering can, looking super cute. Now it is time to load 1833 pumpkin pie and you're gonna have your heart and your flower stitched. Okay, so your heart and your flower are stitched. So now everything is stitched except for all of the embellishments. So for the final three steps, we are going to use filane thread which is this nice 12 weight polyester thread. I believe it's polyester, now I'm saying that. I hope I'm not wrong. But it's just really beautiful and gives such a fun texture. So if you've been doing that on your other blocks, you wanna do that now as well. And so with that comes that we are going to take out our regular embroidery needle that we have in, which is the 7511 embroidery needle. And we're gonna replace that with a much larger um, eye needle. The eye hole is larger to accommodate the larger thread and it's a size 100 slash 16. It's a universal needle, so you can use it on a sewing machine or an embroidery machine. But you wanna change that out, and you also wanna slow your machine down to the slowest speed possible to just help your machine avoid some breakage. Now, once I do that, I am going to load 3860 Peach, and what's going to stitch now is the word bloom. So change out your needle, slow your machine down, and load this beautiful thread. If you are using rayon though, you can load 1225 pastel pink and keep the same needle on your machine, that embroidery needle, and you can stitch the next three steps as notated in the pattern with the rayon thread if you want. So cute, take a look at the word bloom. Oh my gosh, I love it, it looks great. Now we are going to load the 3625 charcoal gray and we're gonna make our little snail have a face. So it's gonna have the two little lines to hold his eyeballs up and then the two little circles in the eyeballs and of course a smiley face <laughs> y'all how cute is this snail with his little face oh my gosh he makes me giggle he's adorable he's just so happy okay so now we're going to load our final color which is 3978 amber in the filane or if you wanted to use the rayon you could use the butterfly gold and your machine is going to do little flower centers and all of your purple flowers and it's gonna do the lines on this flower, and it's gonna do something else. The snail's tail, that's right. It's got a little fun curly cue accent line on your snail tail. <laughs> Ta-da, you are all done. So let's take a look from top all the way down to the bottom. It looks absolutely adorable. How much fun is that? I just love it, and all the embellishments with that filane thread really make everything pop. It's super fun. So I hope that you enjoyed this tutorial. Next month, you'll be awaiting block six, your sixth box. It's gonna be another fun one to stitch. So I'll see you back then. Happy stitching.